In this video, I am going to explain about the method of overloading concept in Java. First, I will define what is method of overloading. Then I will explain the co same concept by taking a simple example program. So once you uh, practically experience any concept that will be registered in our memory long time, please remember this. So I am following this one. Here, this is the definition of method of overloading. You can see. Method of overloading definition is in a class, if more than one method is defined with the same name, but they should differ, they should differ, they should differ by their signature, differ by their signature, then these methods are said to be overloaded. Again, I'm repeating, just I'm going to highlight a few uh, terms in this definition. The first one is in a class. We are talking about a single class. Please remember, we, I, we are talking about a single class. In a class means we are talking about a single class. So inside a class, we are trying to define more than one. More means more than one. More than one method we are trying to define with what? Using the same name, but they should differ by the signature. Then these methods are said to be overloaded. So this is the definition of method of overloading. Again, I'm repeating inside a class, if you declare more than one method with same name, but they should, they should default by their signature. So here our doubt is what is signature? So I will provide that information here. This is called signature. So signature means there are three things we are going to consider. The first one is number of arguments. The first one is number of arguments. The next one is data type of the arguments. And the next one is arrangement of the arguments. Arrangement of the arguments. So three aspects they should, any one of the aspect they should default. Because when the name is common, the same name we are using multiple times at multiple places, but how the Java compiler will identify the difference between those methods, which method is invoked at runtime. So how it is going to resolve it, how it is going to identify the minor differences. So there are three aspects. First, the Java compiler will look into the number of arguments in both the methods or all three methods or all four methods. How many methods we define with same name? In all methods, first it will check number of arguments. Suppose if both the methods are using same number of arguments, then it will consider the next criteria. That is, it will check the data type of the arguments. If suppose, for example, if data types also same, then it will consider the order of the arguments. Order of the arguments means in which order the data type of the values are passed. I will explain through an example, then you can get a clear picture about what exactly this signature is. So this is the simple uh, definition of method of overloading means we are talking about a single class. Inside a class, we are going to define more than one method with same name by different signature. So first I will open the edit plus software to type the Java program related to method of overloading concept, file new Java. So method overload demo. Now. Inside the method or in a class defining more than one method. So I'm going to define more than one method. Public void add and x. I'm passing three arguments. First I'm passing only two arguments. Int result one, that is R1 is sum of uh, the two arguments that are passed inside the add function and immediately we are printing the result. This is the aim of the method. The purpose of this method is performing addition between two arguments that are passed inside the method. Result. So result is stored in a variable called r1 so I am printing that r1. Immediately we need to close this method. 
Now, to satisfy the definition of method of overloading, again, we need to define one more method with same name, but they should differ by their signature. Say one more method, but we cannot maintain the same number of, we can maintain, but uh, if the number of arguments are same, then what is the criteria we are going to check? We need to check the data type of the arguments. After that, we are going to check the arrangement of the arguments. For example, if I pass here one more argument, z, and in place of x plus y, I'm adding one more variable z. And I change the resultant variable name as r2, I am printing the second result. This is result 2. The previous one is result 1. Now, can we call these uh, two methods are said to be overloaded? Yes. According to the definition, in a class, defining more than one method with the same name, they should differ by their signature. The first two criteria we are saying number of arguments. Yes, the first one is expecting two arguments, but the second one is expecting three arguments. Even the name is same, but there is a difference identified with respect to the number of arguments. So then these two methods are said to be overloaded. Now we need to call this, we need to call these two methods inside the main function, inside the main method. So first thing we need to create an object for the above class that is method overload demo. Some object name we need to assign with the help of new operator creating object for the above class that is overload demo. So creation of object is completed. Now my next aim is I want to access both the methods. Two argument method I want to access, three, uh, three argument method I want to access. How can we access? Object name dot method name. The method name is add, but uh, first if I want to access the first method, it is expecting two arguments of integer variables. So 12 and 24. The next one is expecting three arguments. Suppose if I want to access the second type of uh, add method, then I need to pass, suppose for example, like this 11, 22 and 33. Okay. Now, so here no, I am removing this, the default statement that is provided when I am creating a fresh Java application, just I removed it. Here no need to use the print statement, why because inside the add function, add method only, there is a statement that is provided system.out.println, system.out.println, okay, simply we need to access them. So I will first to run this program, I need to save this program with this name. This I am copying the name of the class because it is a lengthy name. I am going to choose the respective directory. It is already in my directory that is Java lab. Decide to give this name. How do we compile and run this program? By opening the command prompt. Go to the respective drive and go to the respective directory. And here using Java C command run the program. If there are no syntax errors, uh, see, uh, actually I typed it as obj1 at the time of creation of object, but later uh, mistakenly I typed obk, there is a reason it is rising another, just I corrected it. Now open the command prompt and recompile. Once we made any changes, we need to save it and recompile. So java space method overload demo. So what are our expectations? Our expectations are first we are accessing two argument method. Next, we are accessing three argument method. So, two argument method will generate the sum of 12 and 24 that results 36. Three argument method is results 11 plus 22 plus 33. So, that is uh, 66. So, this is also 36. This is 36 and 66 are our expectations. See, result 1 is 36 and result 2 is 6. See, the 36 is very close to the uh, description message result 1. And 66 is also very close to the result 2. So if I want to separate that, I want to maintain more space after the description, I can maintain some space here. I can maintain some space here and I can also maintain some column to separating the resultant value, resultant description message and the value. So once I made some changes, immediately I saved it. Just I clear the command prompt. I am recompiling. Run it. You can observe it is readable. Now the output is in the readable mode. Result 1 is 36, that is 12 plus 24. Result 2 is sum of three arguments 11 plus 22 plus 33, that is result of 
66. So here Java defining more than one method with same name is supported in Java. But how the compiler can recognize the difference between these two? Based on three informations, one is uh, number of arguments. Here in which aspect both are different in the number of arguments. Suppose if the number of arguments are same, then how it is going to identify? How it is going to identify? That is the next concept. Similarly, if the number of uh, uh, data types are also same, then number of arguments same, data types also same, then it will consider the, the last one, order. In which order we are arranging the data type of the arguments. So in this way, the method of overloading is, is executed. This I am going to highlight these three things. Please look into this. Either they may differ in the number of arguments or either they may differ in the data type of the arguments or they may differ in the arrangement or order of the arguments. So I think I hope uh, now after executing again, if we come back to this, our definition, if you read it once, you can clearly uh, grasp the concept what exactly method of overloading. Inside a class, defining more than one method with same name and they should differ by their signature. Signature means three things we are considering, number of arguments or data type of arguments or arrangement of arguments. So any of the one, it need not be satisfied all three. Either they should differ by number of arguments or either they should differ by data type of the arguments or either they should differ by arrangement of arguments. Any one aspect they should differ, then only the Java compiler is able to identify the difference between the methods. So it is possible to resolve in the naming collision problem when you are assigning the same name for all the methods that are going to declare inside a class. So this is about method overloading.